In this video, I want to talk about the relationship between nutrients, so vitamins and minerals, to your stress response. Now, there's already a lot of content on this online, but unfortunately, it's usually just lists of nutrients that are depleted by stress. Oftentimes, you take these nutrients but don't really feel any better. In this video, I want to explain why the real relationship between nutrients and stress is a lot more complex. And I will also show you how to do nutrient support for stressful situations correctly. Because if you don't understand these complex relationships, you run the risk of taking the wrong nutrients and making things worse in the long run. So to begin, really the key to understanding the relationship between stress, vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients is to differentiate between acute stress and chronic stress. That's because for the body, very different nutrients are required when you experience a five-minute stressful situation versus a five-year stressful situation. Many people don't know this, so they always recommend the same nutrients for everyone. This usually backfires, especially for sensitive people who get side effects from taking supplements, for example. Let's start by discussing the necessary nutrients for acute stress. Traditionally, this could have meant facing a tiger in the wild, for example, or a modern example would be being late for an important meeting. Those are acute stressful situations that don't really last longer than, let's say, half an hour to two hours. What will then happen is that your body will secrete certain hormones or neurotransmitters that help it react to stress. The two main ones that you're probably already familiar with are adrenaline and cortisol. And these are primarily released by the adrenal glands. Another very important hormone that is not as well known but critical to our stress response is aldosterone. And it spikes sodium. As you probably know, sodium retains water and therefore increases blood pressure and gets your body ready to react. This is to get you going and into the fight or flight reflex. So where you either have to fight the tiger or run from it. In a healthy person, what your body will then also do is increase potassium to balance the sodium. Remember that sodium and potassium are synergists and antagonists. They help regulate each other, but too much of one thing will bring down the other. So to keep the sodium in balance, your body will also increase potassium levels. That means on a mineral analysis chart of a person who's facing acute stress, you can usually tell this directly by increased sodium and potassium values like you can see here. The labs that I recommend for your mineral analysis report that around 20% of their submitted tests show this type of pattern. Now, if you think that 20% sounds a lot less than you were expecting, because basically everyone in the modern world is stressed, uh, wait a second and I will show you what the other 80% of people suffer from. But before we get there, let's talk about secondary nutrients that are also important in your acute stress response. Remember, your primary players are sodium and potassium that will be spiked. In terms of secondary players, the most important thing you need to know is that all calming nutrients, which include calcium, magnesium, and zinc, will be excreted by the body, usually through your urine. And this can happen within a matter of seconds. Again, your body does this to get you going and not be too calm for this stressful situation. It really wants to rev up your metabolism and be able to react to any stressor, be it the tiger or the important meeting. Next to the calming minerals, of course, we also have stimulating minerals, and these would be copper and iron. They will be used in oxygen transport and oxygen metabolism, which is why they're vital and stimulating to the body. In stressful situations, your body counts on these nutrients to increase your oxygen uptake and also to drive sodium up even higher because especially copper can retain sodium in the body. Now, most people are only familiar with the relationship of iron and oxygen transport and energy metabolism. And this is also why many people believe that their iron deficiency is the reason for their chronic fatigue and anemia. In reality, it's a little more complex because the nutrient that makes iron metabolism possible is copper. Oftentimes your iron problems are really a copper problem that you need to look at and fix before the iron metabolism can work efficiently again. Before we go to the nutrients for chronic stress, the last things that we should mention are vitamins that might be used up in acute stressful situations. And the most important ones would probably be the B vitamins 
because they're used for energy metabolism within every cell of your body. Most people think that it's only B6 and B12. Those are usually the ones that are in your energy drink, for example. But really, all B vitamins are used in your cells and are needed in sufficient quantities. Next to the B vitamins, we also have vitamin C that we should talk about because it is critical for adrenal function. Like I said before, the adrenal glands are the ones that secrete most of the hormones that are related to the stress response. And vitamin C is actually found in its highest concentration within the adrenal glands. Now, of course, all of this is just theory. The real question is, how do we support someone in terms of nutrients who is in an acute stress pattern, like I showed you before on the mineral analysis? The primary thing here would be to supplement calming minerals. And the most important one would be magnesium because it helps to relax the muscles, nervous system, and brain. Magnesium actually acts as sort of a beta blocker because it inhibits the action of adrenaline. Calcium can also be helpful because it also calms down the body. It does this because it usually sits outside of the cell and decreases cell permeability. So the more calcium you have outside the cell, the less receptive the cell will be to any type of signal. Now, the issue of tissue calcification, which can be a problem if you take too much calcium, is less of a risk for people in this acute stressful pattern. The reason for this is that they usually have very strong adrenal glands that still support high sodium and potassium levels. Sodium and potassium act as solvent agents in the body, and they help keep calcium in solution and not deposit in the soft tissue. I talk about this in more detail in my video on soft tissue calcification and how to reverse it. In general, people with strong adrenal glands have less of a problem and risk of tissue calcification, so they can definitely take some calcium supplements, assuming that they also supplement magnesium, of course, and the important calcium cofactors such as vitamin K2. The last calming mineral would be zinc, and people in this acute stress pattern definitely need more zinc, but they have to balance it with copper usually. And that's because they burn through so much copper in their stressful situations that they might be copper deficient. If you take too much zinc, you can make this copper deficiency even worse. Now, what about vitamins B and C? Do they also need to be supplemented? You really have to be careful here because even though they are used up to some degree in stressful situations, people in this acute stress pattern usually still have enough of them. Otherwise, their body wouldn't be in this type of pattern. So if you want to supplement them, do so in very low doses and also make sure you know of the nutrient interactions of vitamin B and C. Synthetic vitamin C in the form of ascorbic acid, for example, can lower copper even further. So if you have a copper deficiency and take too much vitamin C in its isolated form, you can make this deficiency even worse, just like with zinc. Okay, now that we talked about important nutrients for acute stress, we also need to talk about chronic stress. People who are in a chronic stress pattern usually are in somewhat of a vicious cycle. What is supposed to happen in a healthy body is that after a stressful situation, the calming minerals that are still in your body should be able to calm you down. Well, people in a chronic stress pattern don't have enough of these calming minerals anymore. They burn through all of them. So what happens is that they experience stress, cannot calm down afterwards, which stresses them even more. So they're kind of stuck in this fight or flight all the time, which eventually burns them out. Eventually, this leads to adrenal fatigue. I know adrenal fatigue is a controversial subject. I talk about it in much more detail in a different video, but we can actually clearly see it on a mineral analysis. Like I said before, aldosterone, which is secreted by the adrenal glands, spikes sodium. So an acute stress pattern has high sodium and high potassium levels. Well, a chronic stress pattern has low sodium and low potassium values because the adrenal glands cannot produce enough aldosterone and other mineral regulating hormones anymore to keep these values high. Here's an example of a clear burnout pattern. And actually most people with chronic fatigue fall into this category. In fact, the labs I talked about earlier report that 80% of submitted tests fall into this category. What that means is that nowadays, most people don't even fall into the acute stress pattern anymore. They fall into the chronic stress pattern, which makes sense. Interestingly, 
a while ago, the labs also reported that this has gotten worse over time. When they started in the 80s, around 50% of their patients were in the acute stress pattern and 50% in the chronic stress pattern. Nowadays, like I said, 80% fall into the chronic stress pattern. And it happens after you went through the acute stress pattern. When you look at this mineral analysis, you might ask yourself why the magnesium and calcium values are high. Didn't I just say that these people already burned through their calming minerals? Now, what you have to understand, and this kind of makes mineral analysis somewhat difficult to interpret correctly, is that these nutrients are no longer bioavailable. Because people in this chronic stress pattern have low adrenal activity, they are no longer able to support the high sodium and potassium values I talked about before. This means they no longer have the solvents needed to keep calcium and magnesium in solution. After a while, they will deposit in the soft tissue, and you can see this on hair analysis. So in this case, high calcium and magnesium values actually mean a deficiency, at least of a bioavailable calcium and magnesium. In terms of biounavailable nutrients, they have enough of it in their tissue. And you actually need to get rid of the biounavailable nutrients, especially calcium, to get these people healthy again. In terms of secondary nutrients next to the calming minerals, we also again need to talk about copper and iron. Whereas a copper deficiency was a potential problem for people in an acute stress pattern, in a chronic stress pattern, copper becomes biounavailable and deposits in the tissue. So just like with calcium and magnesium. This copper overload is very common and a huge problem that I dedicated an entire video to. To add to that, when copper becomes biounavailable, so does iron. Because again, copper makes iron metabolism possible. People who suffer from copper overload basically always also suffer from iron overload. So you have to look at both issues at the same time. When it comes to nutrient support for chronic stress patterns, you still want to give calming minerals. Because even though they are higher on the chart, they have become biounavailable. Calcium supplementation is more individual here, since because of the low sodium levels, these people will have a harder time keeping that calcium in solution. So you run the risk of adding to the tissue calcification by supplementing calcium. This really has to be decided on a case by case basis. Some practitioners are completely against it, while others recommend some calcium in this situation. You kind of have to see for yourself and talk about this with your nutritionist or practitioner. I definitely needed a calcium supplement, but again, this is individual. Same with the zinc. People in a chronic stress pattern are definitely zinc deficient, but because zinc pushes out copper, it can make them feel worse. Too much zinc will lead to copper dumping, where your body pushes out so much copper from the tissue into the bloodstream that you get things like headaches, brain fog, or insomnia. So go slow and see how your body reacts. Next to the calming minerals, you definitely want to increase your sodium and potassium values. You can supplement them directly, but the key to retaining sodium and potassium in your body is adrenal function. Improving your adrenal function really comes down to getting more rest, so they can recover and start pumping out more aldosterone, which will then increase your sodium levels. Vitamin B and C can also help here because the B vitamins support your energy metabolism and vitamin C supports adrenal function. But you need to go slow and be careful because too much of them will be overstimulatory. The B vitamins upregulate certain metabolic pathways. For example, vitamin B6 increases your detox pathway and too much vitamin C will rev up your adrenals without then having rested enough. So this can make you feel anxious and uneasy. All these steps really rely on you taking your time, going slow, and working with someone who has experience with this kind of stuff. If you're looking for a recommended practitioner, I have a list of the best in the world, at least in my opinion, that I can give you. Now, to wrap up this video, let me quickly summarize the key learning points. Number one is that what your body needs really depends on what kind of stress pattern you're in. There's an acute stress pattern, which around 20% fall into, at least the ones submitting their mineral analysis. And then there's a chronic stress pattern, which around 80% of people fall into. The acute stress pattern suffers from an overexcitement of the adrenal glands and a depletion of the calming minerals. 
whereas the chronic stress pattern suffers from uh, adrenal burnout where they can no longer support the important sodium and potassium values. Then a lot of nutrients become biounavailable and deposit in the tissue. Depending on what pattern you're in, the nutrient relationships can get fairly complex. So make sure you also check out my other videos on these topics and work with someone who has experience with this kind of stuff. I hope you like this video and I see you in the next one.